Hello, welcome to Chandwell. This is the first in a multi-part series where I'm going to take you step by step through building a scratch-built industrial building for this part of the layout here um, to go between the river bridge that I did a video on a couple of weeks ago and the viaduct. So I've got a small space here that I wanted to go right up against the road. I want it to be an industrial building of some type. So in this video, I'm going to show you every single step I went through in Inkscape mistakes and everything and um, just to show you the way that I use Inkscape when I approach a new scratch build. This is the first part and I'm going to show you how I made this paper mock-up. So it's always good to start with a mock-up in paper because it doesn't matter if you make mistakes it's very easy to correct them you don't have to use much glue it's just a case of printing it out and folding it. It fits in quite nicely, it's got a few errors with it, keep your eye out for it as I make those as I go through. I've just finished editing the video and I've seen many things that I could have done better and many places where I made the obvious mistakes. But I thought it was important just to show you how I work and um, how my general thinking works as I go. So this is just how I work, there's many other ways of doing it in Inkscape, um, but this hopefully should show you how I approach um, this particular build. So without further ado, let's switch to Inkscape and I'll show you how I made this building. Here I am in Inkscape. Don't worry if yours looks a little bit different to this. Um, depending on what you used last time and how freshly it's been installed and things, I think sometimes it looks different. What I always do when I start an Inkscape build is I create a layer to have the guides in and that is a reference to the rest of the building all the way through. So what we'll do is we'll go to the layers tab. Now there is layers there. Um, you can see it's on it's on my screen already. If it's not there, you can press Shift Control L or you can go up to the layer menu and choose layers. And you'll see there's a layer already there by default, layer one. All I'll do is I'll double click it and that makes it editable. I delete the text that's in there already. I'm just going to call it guides. So there's a layer for our guides. You can also see there a standard A4 sheet of paper. That is the print area. What I'll do is I'll scroll up to get rid of that. I like to work in an area of the page where I'm not constrained by the size of the paper that I'm eventually going to print it out on. So I saw the building that we're drawing in Sheffield when I went for a walk with my good friend Simon. Didn't take any pictures though, so I'm relying on Google Earth. So here we are, it's this long works building in the middle of the screen. You can see here that there's a little road that goes through the middle, through the centre of the building. So if we look at the 3D, we can see that it's quite a long building. I'm not going to make it as long as this. I'm going to focus on the middle bit um, around where that bit of um, road goes through. Here we are looking at the front of the building. So I'm going to keep referring back to Google, especially this street view view, while I construct the front of the building. That's our main focus for this part of the build. I could count the bricks and work out the exact measurements and everything, but I'm not going to go to that level of detail for this one. I just want to get the general feel of this building. So you can see the central arch of the way that the road goes through. And the most important thing I think is the windows. If we look at the ground floor, there's a group of three windows, two large ones with a small one in the middle. And then this group is repeated above and to either side of the central archway. Now for the windows, I'm going to use a product called Scale Glaze by Scale Scenes. These are screen printed window frames onto high quality acetate and they come in various sizes. I'm just looking at the website here to see the different sizes that they're available and the end scale ones are on the right there. So having spent some time browsing these, um, I think I'm going to use um, the ones over here. Um, the size M, the large sash windows. So we'll take those and we'll have a look at the size down here. Um, and then the smaller ones under there, um, G, the small sash windows. So I'm going to use the large and the small sash windows for this. Um, it's not going to match the prototype exactly, but that's the way I'd like to work. So the size M, a 12.5 by 7.5 millimeters. So let's get those drawn onto the canvas. So I just draw a rectangle, colour it in blue. Um, it's important not to have any border 
um, and I'll explain why another time. But for now, up at the top, we'll just type in the dimensions. So a width of 7.5 and a height of 12.5 millimeters. Once that's there, we now know we've got the correct size for our window. Then I just use the text tool just to put on um, all about what that window is. So it's the main window, it's the scale scenes M, and it's on scale glaze sheet 2. That just helps me remember what to order when the time comes. So that's the large window, and the small one, uh, type G, in N scale, it's 9.5 millimeters tall. Again, just draw a rectangle. 4.5 millimeters wide by 9.5 millimeters tall. So let's get that in. So I'm going to base the whole of the building around these two rectangles. These are our rectangles for windows. So this is a smaller window. It's scale scenes type G. And again, it's on sheet two. So I said it's important not to have a border on your rectangles and the reason being is in Inkscape when you have a border the dimensions include the width of the line um, so it's better to not have the line on so that you know that your rectangles are the right size uh, and that way I'm confident that these windows are correct. So we now have some windows let's start arranging them to match the building if you remember there were two large windows with a smaller one in between right click and choose duplicate that creates a copy of that rectangle you could press ctrl d as well if you wanted but anyway i've duplicated it and i've dragged it over here there's our first window if we look there's a large one either side with a smaller one in between so i'm going to just duplicate this one again and holding control down I'm going to move my mouse side to side if you hold control down it keeps it level with where you're moving it that way you know that they're in the right place I'm going to now duplicate the smaller window and move it and just drop it somewhere in between the two larger ones so there we are there's the basis now if you look in here the gap between the windows is around about the same as the width of the larger window so again I'm just wanting general representation so what we'll do is we'll duplicate the larger window color it in a different color just to keep it separate in our minds so we know what we're doing so now duplicate it twice drop them down there let's place the first window somewhere here and now I need to get the red one beside it somehow now we could spend a lot of time trying to arrange these very very precisely but the best way in Inkscape to do it is to use the snapping tools the snapping tools are basically lots of different ways of getting shapes to line up with each other with the minimum of fuss what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn them all on by clicking the whole lot of these buttons down the right hand side. I'll leave those few at the end unticked because we won't really use those. But now as I drag the red one around you'll see that as it gets close to the blue one it jumps into place so it snaps to it. That way we know that they're sticking to the red spacing rectangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to arrange them all alongside each other like that and then delete the two red rectangles. So now we've got the three windows with an equal space equivalent to the width of the larger window between them. If we now look back to what we're working on, it looks about right. Maybe it's still a little bit too wide. Obviously the proportions of the windows are a little bit different because I'm going to be using the scale glaze windows. In fact, I'm not actually happy with the width in there, so let's try a different technique. I'm going to drag this one in a little bit to reduce the overall width of the three of them. And then just drag around them and select them. And then I'm going to choose the Align tool over here. Now you can get that by pressing Ctrl Shift A or choosing Object, Align and Distribute down at the bottom. Select that and then choose this one here which is Make Horizontal Gaps Equal. We'll click that and that basically just puts the middle one um, into the middle there and the gap either side is equal. Now that looks a lot more pleasing to my eye. It looks more like what we're looking at here. Obviously the large one on the prototype has got this arch on top and once I build this properly I may or may not put an arch on top. But I think this looks more representative of the original. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw around them again with the tool which selects all three of them. I'm going to right click and I'm going to click group. That just puts them together so now I can drag that around as a group of three as and, as and when I need to. Now if we look there's a similar group of three up above and to either side of the central arch. 
So they're the same size windows, they've got slightly different treatments. What I'm going to do, I'm going to click on it once to select it. I'm going to press Ctrl D to duplicate it. Then holding Ctrl down, move it up. Now the gap between the top and the bottom is again, it's about the width of the larger window. So again, I'm not going to be too precise. I'm just going to drag it to where it looks right for now. I'm going to select a pair of them, press Ctrl D to duplicate, then holding Ctrl down, drag them to the right. So this is now given the rough basic outline of the main windows. Let's now get the middle windows in place. Now these ones look as though they're about the same distance apart as they are in the main set. So it looks like the distance between the little one and the large one is about the same as the distance between the two large ones. So we'll duplicate the main window again and drag it into place, give it a slightly different colour. I'm going to line this one for now right on top of the small window, duplicate it and drop it back on top of the big one. Now because we had snap enabled, we now know that these are exactly the same distance apart from each other as the main bank of windows. So we can drag those roughly into the right amount of place. Um, again, I'll snap it to the side of that one and then hold Ctrl down and move it to the side. That way I know that they're all lined up. Now we've got quite a big gap here between the sets of windows and the ones in the middle. I'd say it's almost twice as wide as the gap um, between the other sets of windows. So what we need to do is to get that reflected on the canvas. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a rectangle using the snap tool from there to there. Now that gives me a rectangle that's the same width as the gap. I'm going to colour it in differently, drop it down in the gap here, um, which is the gap between there and there, and essentially I'm going to make, the, make it twice as wide. Now to do that, I'm going to move things out of the way. Now all I need to do is duplicate that and drop it down again, and I know that I've now got a gap that's twice as wide as the gap over there. I can select them, drop them down, and get them in the right place. Be careful to select both groups there so they're all moving together. Um, it snaps into place, and it's as simple as that. So what about the size of this opening in the arch? Now I could use Google to measure the width of the road here and try and get exactly the right proportions, but instead I'm just going to try and get it looking right because I'm using the scale glaze windows as the reference point. Now there's these buttresses to either side of the archway and they look to be about half the width of the width between the two big windows at the top. So let's see if we can get that represented on the canvas. I'm going to undo it to get these, these orange rectangles back. Now I know that these are half the width of the, of the large gap already because you know I, I, I measured it that way and that's how I did it. So I'm going to drop it roughly in the middle and extend it. Um, using that middle arrow there, drag it up and down, it makes it longer and shorter without it affecting the rest of the measurements. So by dragging this one here um, to the side and then using the snap to midpoint on top, make it a different colour, you'll see what I'm talking about. So we've got one there which is half the width. Now its right hand edge, if we line up the middle bit of the pink one there, we now know that that middle one, the pink one, is exactly in the middle and it's exactly half the width of the large gap. You can see there it's, it's snapping to the midpoint. Delete the orange one, we now have a pink one right in the middle in the right place. So that represents where that buttress would go. We take a look that's that there. So that buttress there is the pink bit. So undo it, get the orange one and the pink one back, duplicate the orange one, move it over there, duplicate the pink one, move it over there, snap it into place. We now have two pink ones in the middle and they represent those buttresses. Now using snapping we can drag another rectangle, give it a different colour, but it does still look a little bit wide so I'm going to just select it and take off one and a bit millimetre just to make it a nice even 23 millimetres wide. So now all I need to do is get this aligned to the middle of the two windows up above it. And to do that, it's fairly simple. Let's get rid of the two pink uprights. We need to get this orange one right in the centre now of everything else. So to do that, I'm going to select the bottom row and group it. So we've got one row at the bottom, grouped. And then I'm going to select the top row and group that as well. So I've now got a top row, the bottom row, and the orange archway entrance. I'm going to select them all and I'm going to just align them to the centre. That just puts the orange archway into the middle of the two windows up above and it looks about right for what we're looking for. So let's move on to the rest of the front of the building. Let's have a look here and work out where the ground is. 
It looks to me as though the distance between the lowest windows and the ground is about the same as the distance between the top window and the bottom window. So working with that then, we will draw a rectangle with snapping on between the bottom of the top window and the top of the bottom window. That gives us the space. If we drag that down to the bottom, snap it to the bottom window, then drag it all the way along, we now have the bottom of our building. And we can drag that archway down, and that snaps to the bottom of the yellow rectangle. That gives us about the right space for the archway. And if we look at the proportions on the prototype, it looks about right. It's just slightly lower than the top of the lower set of windows. So what about the width of the building? If we have a look, uh, the distance between the outer edge of windows and the edge of the building that we can see with those drain pipes is about one and a half times the gap between the larger and the smaller windows. So we'll bear that in mind and when we go over to the canvas we'll try and make that so. So as before we'll start by drawing a rectangle. We'll draw it between the large and the small window. That gives us the width of the gap. And if we look up here, it's 4.593 millimetres. Now, I said it was around about one and a half times as wide, so let's make it 6.75 millimetres wide. And then we can drag that to the outer edge of the larger windows. If we duplicate it and drag it to that side, we now have a gap on that side of the building. We'll drag it up, we'll use snapping like that, and that is now snapped to both sides of the building. So now we'll get the bottom of the building in place. I'm just going to draw a rectangle of any old size underneath the orange arch there and just drag it along both ways. I've snapped it to the bottom of the arch so that I know that that's the bottom of the building and I can then bring the side rectangles down and snap those to the bottom one. Now it looks again that the distance between the top window and the roof line is about the same as the distance between the top of the bottom set of windows and the top set of windows. So bearing that in mind, I'm going to use the same technique. I'm going to draw a rectangle between the bottom of the top windows and the top of the bottom windows, move it up to the top of there, snap it on um, corner to corner, and then simply drag it along corner to corner there. So that is roughly the outline of the building that we want. I'm now going to use the line tool. I'm going to add a line colour just of straight black. I'm just going to simply draw around the four corners of the building there. And what that does is that gives us a nice outline in black of the building. I'll colour it in red and then remove the outline. I've sent that red rectangle to the back and now I'm cleaning up by deleting the yellow rectangles. And that, now, is the outline of the building. The last thing to do on the building now is to put this top bit on. Now, I've got no idea what the correct architectural term for this thing is. If you do know, please put it in the comments, because I would like to know, rather than calling it this thing that sticks up. Anyway, as with everything, I'm going to start with some guides. I'm going to draw a green rectangle of a random size at the top, and then drag it into here, and drag it along with snapping, so that it represents the same width as between the two sets of windows. I'm going to duplicate it and drag it along that side. I've made sure that the snapping has snapped it to the top of the building so that they're all in line. I'm going to draw another rectangle now of a different colour again. Again, place it at a random size and then use snapping. I'm going to snap its corner to the centre of the two green rectangles. What that means is I know now that the width of this it's centred on the two darker windows and it goes down to about halfway between the windows and the next set, which looks like what it does in real life. I'm then just going to choose a random size that looks about right for the height of the first of the lower bit of the thing that sticks up. Using a rectangle again, in, in between the two windows, I'm going to drag that up and that is that central top there. That top looks about the same width as the width between the two windows. Let's do another rectangle, and this time, holding down control, I'm going to use the rotation handles, which means I can rotate it an exact 45 degrees. And then snapping it into the center, I know that that is now centered. Now, moving it to the back, that is far too sharp, sharp an angle. So I'm just gonna use the central 
arrow to drag it down. You'll see here that snapping is causing a bit of a problem, so I'm going to turn that off. And now that gives me full control of where I can place that. I'm going to make it a little squatter and move it up and keep playing around with it until it looks about right to my eye. Moving this rectangle to the back, I can use the arrow to drag that down and I'm starting to get the shape about right. So I'm going to turn on snapping again and I'm just going to draw around the points of what I've drawn. I'm going to do this bit first, that gives me this shape. I can then select that shape that I've just drawn, colour it in blue just to make it obvious. I'm then going to select that rectangle, that triangle shape and that rectangle and I'm going to use path union and then delete the pink shape behind it. What that's done is it's given me one solid shape which is currently this blue one that looks around about the right size for this. I'll just make it a little bit squatter and move it down a little bit as well with snapping off. Again I could have measured this or counted bricks or something but I'm just using my own eye just to see what looks about right and I think that looks okay. And now we can move on to the rest of the building. I've got to do the sides and the back. Now if we look, one side of the building in real life is slightly wider than the rest of the building. And I'd like to model that because I think it'll give a nice courtyard kind of look when it's against the viaduct. First of all though, I'm going to measure the width of the building and it's about 7.5 metres. I simply divide that by 148 and it comes out at 50.67 millimetres wide in end scale. So I'm going to draw a rectangle and then I'm going to use the normal snapping tools just to snap it to the side of our building that we've drawn and I'm going to go up here and I'm going to make it a straight 50 millimeters wide. Feels about right to do that. Make sure it's snapped into place and that is going to be the side of our building. I'm going to put another one on which is half the, half the width. That is just enables me to find out and quickly and easily work with the centre when it comes to putting the roof on. Now I looked at this for quite a long time and I think that the thing that sticks up, whatever it might be called, seems to stick up to the same height as the top of the roof line. So I'm going to use that as my guiding principle for when I do the roof angles. The roof line does look quite shallow so I think I'm probably about right. I'm going to make the top of the roof, I'm going to make the ridge line the same height as the top of the blue thing. So to that end, I'm going to draw and hold control down and draw a straight line. That ensures that the line is straight. And I'm going to use snapping to, to bring the top of the pink rectangle, which is half the width of the yellow one, to the same height. Sometimes snapping works a bit funny and you'll see me struggling with it a little bit, but I always get there in the end. Now I'm going to use the line tool simply to draw around this shape. I'm going to snap it to the corner of the yellow one, to the top of the corner of the pink one, and then back down to the corner of the yellow one and finish off making a shape. That's made a shape with a black outline. I'm going to select it, colour it in orange, move it to the back, delete the two guideline rectangles, and then take off the line. And that is my corner of my building. Okay, I'm going to duplicate that and move it to the other side. Again, snapping ensures that it all lines up and stays perpendicular to each other. But now the left hand side of the building needs to be wider than the right hand side. So how are we going to do that? I'm not going to measure how much wider it needs to be. I'm essentially going to make it wide enough so that the extended bit of roof comes down to around about the top of the top set of windows. Now I'm going to use snapping to draw a line across this bit of the roof line. And the nice thing about diagonal lines is you can just make them bigger and they'll keep their exact angle. So essentially just using the tools I've just pulled it out to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to draw a guideline with snapping from the top of the blue top of windows and along to the left. And essentially where those two lines cross is where I want the roof line to be extended to. I'm going to use another rectangle just to help me. And the reason I do that is it just makes the snapping a little bit easier. I'm going to snap that rectangle to the intersection. You can see sometimes that the snapping does behave strangely, particularly with rectangles. So I find if you turn this one off, 
it works a lot easier. So you can turn that off and then turn it back on again later on. So I'm going to delete the two black lines that I used as guides and that gives me a much cleaner area on which to snap my way around. So I'm going to snap my way around the edges. I'm going to snap straight down to that corner there, down to the bottom and along back to where I started. And if you double click at the end that finishes the shape. So that new shape I'm going to colour in a different colour and remove the lines and that is the shape and I can remove the orange guidelines now. So I'm getting there. So that gives me a left hand side of the building which goes deeper than the one on the right and the roof line descends right down to the line of the top windows. Now the back part of the extended bit needs to go about the same or exactly the same width as the left hand side of the building between the building edge and the arch. So I've drawn a yellow rectangle using snapping to give me the basic shape. I've moved it over to the end of the brown bit, again using snapping, and that's enabled me to draw this pink rectangle of the correct width on this side of the building. So that's the back wall which takes me as far as the arch. We now need the bit of the wall that does a return back to the full width of the normal building. So to that end I'm going to duplicate the shorter side and pop it on top of the brown one. And essentially the return piece of wall has to be the same width as the amount of brown that's showing there. I'm going to duplicate the yellow rectangle and using snapping, well, I'll colour it in different colour first, using snapping drag it along so that's now the same width as the brown rectangle. Put that there next to the yellow, duplicate the pink, move it over, using snapping, different colour, drag it in. It's the same process over and over again. So that's the return bit of the wall, which returns the wide bit of the building back to the correct width for the narrow bit. All we need now is the final bit of wall, and that is the width of the arch plus the bit on the right. Again, guideline rectangle, drag it into place, copy the pink, drag it into place, drag that out. And because we've used snapping, we don't need to worry about measurements. We don't need to worry about measuring the whole thing. We know that this building is now the full width and we can just double check that by making sure that those two rectangles together are the same. And they are. So that's it. That is the initial net of the building that we're going to print out onto paper and fold it up and see how it looks on the layout. We don't want to print it obviously in all these colours, so what I've done is I've selected the whole thing and duplicated it and dragged it down here. Now I'm going to try and get it all ready for printing. I'm going to ungroup everything first. Um, it makes it easier if you ungroup everything. Um, the reason being is I want to actually cut these windows out of the red um, rectangle rather than just having them on top of the red rectangle. So I'm going around ungrouping them all and then once I've done that I can use the difference path command to essentially take away the blue from the red and leave a hole in the red. Um, Shift Control minus um, does the same so I'm going to repeat that over and over again. Select the red, select the blue, Shift Control minus and then that leaves a hole. Do it for the arch as well. Now I want the blue bit and the red bit to be the same shape so I'm going to select both of those and use path union and that just turns it into one shape. So the front of the building now is one shape rather than lots of shapes on top of each other. I'm going to select the whole thing, fill it in white and then give it a grey outline by holding shift down and pressing the grey. And I'm just going to go to the fill and stroke palette there and just make sure that the width of the line is 0.2 millimetres. I find that a grey line, 0.2 millimetres, is about the right size for when we're printing. It makes it easy enough to cut, but it's not so wide that it impinges on the whole design, especially when you've started to get brick textures and things like that. Now, I'm dragging this down to the print area, and you can see it's far too long. Um, so we're going to have to split it into two bits. Oh, look, I've left that bit as two separate shapes, that needs to be one, so I'll just union that as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the whole thing, uh, move it around a little bit. What we need to do is split it into two. So I'm just going to select this bit, click group, do the same for this bit, click group. Then I'm going to select both groups and rotate them here by 90 degrees. If we then see that fits perfectly onto the sheet of A4 paper. 
So we're almost done. All we need now is some way to be able to glue the two parts together. So I'm going to add a little flap. And that flap is, you guessed it, just going to be a rectangle. So let's draw a rectangle. We'll use snapping so it snaps to the edges of the building like this. I often find it's easier sometimes to use the corner handle. I do have trouble with snapping rectangles sometimes. I have to turn these four off um, and then it starts to work. I'm not sure why it does that. I'm not sure if it's a bug or if there's a reason for that in Inkscape, but do watch out for it. So I'm going to pull the edges in a little bit and to do that I need to turn the rectangle into a path. So I use path, object to path. That turns the rectangle into a shape with four corners, which you can then use the node tool there to drag it in a little bit. And I do that on both sides. That just gives a nice little flap that I can apply glue to when I'm sticking the whole thing together. Once I've done that, I can duplicate that shape by Control D, drag it out of the way and flip it along its horizontal axis and then pop it at the other end. So now the back of the building has got two flaps on the end, which will be perfect for gluing together to the main part. Now all I need to do is print this out, cut it, fold it and stick it and see what it looks like on the layout. So the mock-up is complete. It fits really nicely in the gap. Um, it's perfect width, um, more by accident than design. I didn't actually measure the gap when I was working. I just worked on the basis of the windows. Um, so that was a, a happy coincidence more than anything else. Um, I've decided that I'd like the extension bit that sticks off the end to be on the other side because I think it would look good to have a kind of a courtyard here between the extended bit of the building and the viaduct. I think that would look good. Um, I also made an obvious mistake um, in that the bit that returns here um, I didn't bring back up to the correct height of the wall so this rear wall here um, is too small. I need to have a, an upward bit on this bit of return so, so that's easy to do. Um, obviously I also didn't take into consideration yet that it's going to be up at road level and that the ground is going to be slow going slightly up um, towards the back. But it's a really successful first build. I think the proportions look good. I think the building looks good. It's exactly as the, I think it's got the feel that I was looking for, so I'm really happy with it. So I'm now gonna progress on to the second stage and that will be in the next part of this video, which I'll be posting in two or three weeks time. That video will show the obvious next step, which is to fix the errors and then build a mock-up out of cereal packet. This is just basically a cornflake packet and um, folded in the same way um, but it goes in nicely and it, it's exactly what I want so that's what I'll be showing you in the next episode and then from there we'll go into the build itself. So I hope this is of some use. Um, please add any comments especially if you've got any questions or if anything didn't make sense um, and also please tell me what this bit that sticks up is because I've got no idea. I don't want to have to keep calling it the blue sticky up bit. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.